Uncensored. Unfiltered. Unhinged. It's the Corel Cast. Listen daily on your favorite streaming service. I am Corel. I am my crowd. <laughs> it is the Corel Cast. I am Corel. So very glad you are joining me on this Friday. Uh, and you know we got a we got a lot, honey. <laughs> we got we got we got something so floor. I mean, I'm even floored. I, I I am a bit. If everything they're saying is true in the news right now, just if half of what they're saying is true about the current political scandal du jour, uh, then I I'm 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 bowled over. I am I'm just floored. So we're going to talk about that. But first, I want to start with some good news because it's Friday. You know, I bet you ask yourself this same question that I ask myself all the time, which is, how do I always end up in these situations? Now, at, that question came up because yesterday at Desert Breeze Park, uh, Eric, the uh, gorgeous uh, park manager guy, uh, found a, tur a turtle, a large turtle. And I'll show you, I'll flash a picture up here in a minute of the turtle who I have named Horace because he told me his name was Horace. Uh, so Horace, the turtle, uh, Ember and I met him and Ember loved him and, and Horace was very pleasant to Ember. But Horace looked distressed and he didn't look like he belonged at Desert Breeze Park. Now, uh, Eric, the park manager, didn't really know what to do. So of course he says, Charles, <laughs> hey Corel, what would you do? Uh, what would you do? And so I look down and I think, oh God, it's now going to be upon me to rescue this tortoise. Because what seems like when anything is found in public, like a dog, a person, a turtle, I seem to be the one that gets involved. I seem to be the one to find it a home. And I asked my friend on the phone, David Etheridge, why? Why, is, why am I always that person? He goes, because you're one of the few people that will actually do it. So there we stood with this turtle. Well, my friend David actually sent me Las Vegas Turtle Rescue, their phone number, called, got voicemail. Doesn't help us standing there with a turtle that's obviously not meant for the park. He had webbed feet. So I'm like, this is an aquatic turtle. This is not a desert turtle. But what do I know from turtles, right? So uh, I start calling everybody. Animal control, 45 minutes on hold. Uh, our non-emergency, uh, 311, another 30 minutes because the, the calls were going simultaneously, one on my phone, one on Eric. So 30 minutes, basically no one answered. Both the police non-emergency did not answer in over a half an hour and animal control did not answer. So then we found the urban wildlife department in Reno, which we called and they gave us the representative in Nevada or down in Las Vegas, because if it is a desert tortoise, it's protected. We can't touch it. They have to come out. I, I think they do a parade. Uh, something happens. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's put on a pedestal and then it's, it's marched through town and then brought back out to the desert or something like that, I think, uh, because the way they were acting. Is it a desert, desert tortoise? So then I, after like 40 minutes of standing in front of the turtle, who we have now put in a puddle, and he is so happy. Oh my God. His little head, he put it under the water, and his little feet, he was, and he got all spread out, and he let his tail all out, and he didn't mind Ember at all. This was someone's pet that they have dumped, because I hate humans, because humans do this. They dump their pets. I found a dog tied up in the park. It was a dumped pet. We got it adopted. Found a mother pit bull that had been abandoned behind a trash can. Her teeth still had milk. Uh, no puppies anywhere. She had been thrown out. We got her adopted. So I'm not new to this at the park. This was just my first turtle. Uh, I, I thought it was uh, Mitch McConnell. Is that you? Uh, I Really, I thought he had found Mitch McConnell. There you are under that rock where you belong. Uh, but anyway, so finally I call my vet. My vet refers me to another vet who does exotics. They refer me to another vet who does exotics, who then <laughs> uh, basically says we can't take the turtle. So then I get a call back from the urban wildlife person now, an hour into this, standing by the turtle in the puddle, people at the park loving to come and see the turtle. Uh, I now, I, I thought I should start, start charging. See the turtle, 10 cents. Uh, see Mitch McConnell. Uh, anyway, so uh, they finally say call a pet store. And I'm like, okay. So I knew of this one on Charleston, a big reptile store. Uh, well, first of all, no, let me rephrase. First, the uh, last vet that we called said, oh, any Petco and any PetSmart will take that turtle. You can surrender it. 
and they will take it and rehome it. They said, does it have red on the side of its uh, neck? I said, yes, two red stripes. They go, that is a red ear slider. Ah, that's what that is. And you can, it's not protected. It's an invasive species. So suddenly we, get, we started getting told by animal control that finally called back to leave it alone. And if it dies, it dies because they're an invasive species. And if they were to come out to get the turtle, they would probably kill it. And I'm like, you are not killing Horace. How dare you? And he doesn't know he's an invasive species. He's just a happy little turtle in a puddle. So no, 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 nay, nay, you powers that be, stay away. Uh, so we call a pet store called Scales and Tails on Charleston here in Las Vegas. Uh, and I spoke to the gentleman on the phone who, who, they don't open till 10, but he answered at 9.30. Thank you. I believe his name was Vince or Vinny. Uh, he sounded attractive. You can tell by people's voice that they sound cute. He sounded cute. Uh, and he said, you know what? My friend has a 3,000 gallon pond. If the turtle is nice, uh, he can live in that pond. Uh, and maybe we can even get him rehomed. So yes, bring him here and we will handle this turtle for you. And I felt like crying after an hour of nonstop phone calls. Uh, finally, we found a place for Horace. Uh, and so um, Eric went and got um, a container, a tub. I don't carry those on my motorcycle because I didn't realize I'd be rescuing a turtle. Uh, and so we, we get a tub. Uh, and suddenly I'm like, well, Eric, you're on, you're on duty. He goes, well, I could go at lunch and it's 930. I said, oh dear Lord, we need to get this turtle over there sooner. And I'm on my motorcycle, my, my Apagio MP3 thinking, well, how can I carry a turtle? Uh, you know, would Ember mind it in the bag? I was like, Ember, you're going to carry a bag with a turtle. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, another park person that we always see there was walking by uh, and they said they would take the turtle to Scales and Tails. We gave them the address, told them the person, uh, we gave them the bucket. And he took it to Scales and Tails. I called as Horace was arriving. And Vince was, oh, he's a big boy. And he was. He was, he was like, he was, you know, 10, 12 inches. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, I talked to Vince. Uh, and I said, you know, can I donate something or something? I mean, I, you're just, I'm so grateful that you're taking this turtle so we don't have to leave it to die or the animal control doesn't come get it and kill it. Uh, and he's like, you can spread the word. He thought, you know, we will take these types of turtles. Uh, and, you know, if there's other reptiles in distress, you know, please don't kill them. Don't bring them to parks. Don't, you know, don't mistreat them. Bring them to us. And so Scales and Tails in Las Vegas, I love you. Thank you so much for taking Horace. I, I will check up on him and make sure that he's all acclimated and got himself with little digs. Uh, it's not his fault that an irresponsible... Now, see, I used to have one. I'm convinced this was my turtle. And if I had a bigger place with a backyard, I totally would have adopted him. Uh, because when I was a kid, uh, going cross-country with my parents, because remember, we were very poor and we never really stayed in any one place, you know, for a very long time. We were traveling cross-country and I got, in Woolworths. Woolworths used to have a pet department by their, by their uh, soda fountain. And for a nickel, you could get a little turtle... And then you could get a little plastic container with a little fake palm tree in it for a dollar. So for a dollar fifty, my parents got me a turtle, turtle food, and a little turtle thing. And we traveled cross country, and I wouldn't get rid of my turtle. So we took him with us. Uh, and I'd put him in a food to go container every time we went into a restaurant because I wouldn't leave him in the car. Uh, and I forgot him many times in the restaurants. So they would come out and say, you forgot your, and I'd, I'd, my parents would say, oh, don't open that. And then of course many would, and they'd scream because they didn't realize there was a live turtle in there. Uh, and he was, he had the red and yellow on the side of the neck. So he must've been a red eared slider. Uh, but he was like this big, he was like the size of a dollar. Well, they live forever. That could have been him. So I felt a, I felt a responsibility to this turtle. Uh, and I'm that person. Are you that person? Because if you are, good on you. If you're the person that cannot walk by an abandoned dog, an abandoned cat, a harmed animal, an animal in distress, a person in distress, if, you, if you're that person, don't ask yourself why anymore. The answer is because you're a good person. Uh, and the universe knows, and that's why it sort of puts you in that place. Obviously, Horace needed Eric and I yesterday to get him out of that park and back into a pond where he belongs. Uh, and now today he is, and I thought we'd start the show with that because we have so much bad news every day. Yesterday, a turtle that I named Horace got some really good news. Uh, so there, well, okay, so meanwhile, the other turtle, uh, Mitch McConnell, 
He didn't get such good news yesterday. <laughs> uh, so, you would have to have been living in a cave uh, or really be disconnected from the news to not know, uh, because he's been out there screaming about it, uh, that the former uh, talk show host, womanizing pedophile, friend of Jeffrey Epstein, hirer of hookers, grifter, uh, university defrauder, uh, the guy who's about to have his uh, uh, dealings in New York dissolved because of fraud, uh, this criminal that occupied the White House uh, for four years uh, because he was elected by a group of un-American idiots, um, racist, xenophobes, homophobes, murderers, killers, that's who supports him. They're domestic terrorists and they're proud of it. They put it up, on, they, they put a banner up at CPAC that we were all domestic terrorists. You didn't have to tell us we knew. I guess it was a reminder course in case they had forgotten that they were in fact domestic terrorists. Uh, so, you know, oh, I forgot. I'm totally supposed to go blow up the FBI uh, because the next day they did or, or try to. Uh, so Trump, uh, Mar-a-Lago, his hotel and residence uh, where he actually lives illegally, breaking the codes in South Florida. Um, he did not get raided. He, a search warrant was executed. He wasn't there. He was in New York, okay? I believe Melania was, or as far away from him as possible. She was probably in France, whatever. Uh, thinking of Prada every time her heels go up. Uh, so Mar-a-Lago got searched. Uh, and Trump, of course, could have you know, posted the warrant immediately. He had a copy of it. He did not. Instead, he violated his own right to privacy because he's really good at that. Uh, and he told the world, I've been searched. Now, he didn't have to. He wasn't there. You know, he, he did not have to disclose, but he did. So he discloses because he's a blabbermouth. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, which is why he's going to go down because he'd rather talk than cover up his crimes. Uh, so he gets searched. So for a day, the Republicans control the narrative. And their narrative is... Don't trust the FBI. The FBI is going to plant evidence. And it got so anti-law enforcement that a Fox News host called out a guest and said, I thought we were the party of protect the blue. We're the party of law and order. And now you're trying to defund the FBI and speaking out against these people. Doesn't that go against? So if a Fox News person is questioning it, you know it's the end of the world. You know, basically, that all sense and reason has come to an end because someone at Fox News just has a cognitive thought. And that, I mean, I'm sure they were fired immediately because anyone with a brain cell working cannot work there. Ask Laura Ingram. Oh, you can't. She's too stupid to answer. Anyway, so uh, he's out there screaming all day, I've been raided. Oh, Lordy, he was the victim. Oh, the poor thing. Oh, Donald raided, raided, raided. No. As I said on the last show, I've seen a raid. That wasn't a raid. That was a visit. He's been visited. Uh, so Merrick Garland, our attorney general, who we all think is somewhere, you know, living in a cave. Like, hello. <laughs> Why isn't he indicted already? Uh, Merrick Garland came out yesterday and said, you know what? I have asked that the court unseal the search warrant and a list of what was found. Now, Trump already has that, okay? Trump could post that right now. Uh, he already has it. Uh, but Merrick Garland said, and then said, Merrick is in Merrick's like, and I will not stand uh, for y'all disparaging the FBI. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, then sit for it because they're going to do it. Seated senators, seated Congress people. Marjorie Taylor Greene was in communication on the True Social app with the guy that went and attacked the FBI. Marjorie Taylor Greene. And she's still in office. But whatever. Okay. Mayor. I hope Merrick Garland's got her on the list. I hope he's like Santa Claus. I hope Merrick Garland's got a list of seditionists and traitors and he is checking it twice and then send an agent, honey. So do not send flowers. Send an agent. Uh, and so this guy attacks the FBI. He gets killed because they're all gonna. All these maggots that decide to rise up, we won't kill them because that's what you do when someone's firing at an FBI place with a nail gun. Uh, or shooting from a cornfield, like he's, I don't know, Field of Dreams on, on crack or something. I don't know. So anyway, so he did. Uh, and Trump is responsible, and Fox News is directly responsible for his death. And if his family were smart, they would sue Fox News and Truth Social for misinformation that led to his, you know, him whacking, being whacked out uh, and going up against the FBI. So that happens, right? 
So Merrick Garland says, okay, but we're going to give Trump just a minute in case he wants to make an objection uh, to privacy. So in other words, Merrick Garland called his bluff. Merrick Garland said, I'm going to release the warrant and the list of things that were taken, uh, unless, of course, he objects because he's out there screaming. Uh, so today, Trump has said, I do not object. Release the warrant. I demand the warrant be released. He said that. He said he demands the warrant be released. He's got a copy in his possession. And now the Washington Post has reported that it was nuclear secrets that he was hiding at Mar-a-Lago in a basement with a padlock bought at Big Five Sporting Goods. So uh, these nuclear secrets, you know, in the basement with a padlock bought at Big Five Sporting Goods uh, <laughs> or removed from, you know, I don't know, Ivana, Ivanka's... Oh, by the way, Ivana Trump, she dies mysteriously. Ivanka, she dies mysteriously. Is that the daughter or the mother? Oh, I get them confused. The old one. Uh, dies mysteriously, is cremated, cremated, and then buried on his golf course in a coffin that it takes six people to carry. First of all, she was so emaciated when she died, you know, th this poor woman who probably hadn't eaten an actual meal in years uh, because, you know, trying to keep that look, uh, sh you know, she, her ashes probably weighed 12 ounces. And usually you don't put ashes inside a giant coffin and then have 10 people carry that coffin and then bury them on a golf course. What the hell's in that coffin? I watch enough Law and Order and all that. I don't, you know, it's something's in that coffin other than the ashes of that old dried up woman. So anyway, so now we got Trump screaming, release the warrant when he has it in his possession. He could release it right now. Well, they gave him till noon today, an hour and 10 minutes from now. Uh, our time, three o'clock their time, to contest the release. Well, obviously he's not gonna, he already said release the warrant. Uh, so I, am, I assume that sometime this afternoon, the search warrant will be coming out where we see that they were looking for nuclear secrets. So he's basically Trump Rosenberg, uh, who we killed 65 years ago for giving nuclear secrets to Russia. Remember the Rosenbergs, any of you? I, I wasn't old enough to, I'm only gonna be 60, but I, I certainly learned about them. That couple that got killed, killed, baby, killed, because they were given Russian nuclear secrets. It's how Russia got their nuclear program, the Rosenbergs. So there's a couple things. We can assume that any classified information he had in the basement has already been copied and given to everybody. Okay? Jared Kushner just got a $2 billion check. That sounds like a whole lot of secrets to the Saudis to me. So also he held this, this Saudi Arabian golf tournament at his golf course just weeks ago, where the coffin is buried, by the way, uh, with the Saudis who would love to have some of our nuclear secrets, so much so that whistleblowers under Trump were worried that he was giving too much information to the Saudis. And now he's got boxes of information that probably contain nuclear secrets, having a party with the Saudis at his golf course. If you can't put that together, then honey, you've got some spatial issues. Because I'll tell you right now, in this world, two plus two makes four. He is dealing in nuclear secrets. Okay? He is. He's a traitor. He's committed sedition. He's committed about three crimes guilty of the death penalty, by the way. About three. Treason uh, and now espionage. That's, you know, these are all, they're, ask the Rosenbergs. Oh, you can't. <laughs> they did. And he's committed crimes that are just, you know, ripe for the death penalty. And now the Republicans this morning, they were going to have a, 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 um, a press conference, the Republican caucus, at 6 a.m., 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, or Eastern time, uh, about the search on Donald Trump. Guess what they did after they found out there's probably nuclear documents? They canceled their press conference. Yeah. You see, here's the deal. And this, you know, I say this every day and I'm going to say it again. He should be in jail. He should be tried legally for his crimes. And if the death penalty is applicable, it should be given. All of his supporters, including those in Congress and the Senate, should be removed and tried for treason and seditious conspiracy. Rand Paul, who went on television questioning the FBI as Every seated senator and congressperson that both contested the election and is now actually calling into, what do you want to call it, disparity, the FBI, they're saying, oh, 
you know, maybe they're planning evidence. All of them, they should be gone and tried and locked up. And if we don't, okay, y'all, because there's either you want to handle the problem or you don't. So if we don't do this, then they'll just keep on keeping on. They're the energizer bunnies of evil, honey. They got to make the best of, best of, best of a bad situation. And they're going to do it. They're going to profit from it. He's already raising money off the raid. Already sent out the thing. Help me fund blah, blah, blah. Give me money. So he's already raising money off the raid. Rand Paul is out there. Kevin McCarthy's out there. They're all out there. And they're all trying to raise money and raise support for their candidates. If, re- if one Republican wins in the midterms, they should be removed because the GOP is a terrorist party. They can't back out of this now. They've been supporting a guy who is basically committing espionage and committed treason. And that makes them duplicitous. You lie with dogs, you're going to get fleas, okay? And you don't want that. You don't want ticks. You could get Lyme disease. Lyme disease just killed a reporter at KT... KT KTVU, KT, oh, up in the Bay Area. Oh, I used to watch that station too. And I think I used to do entertainment drops for the station. KT, oh, I'm sorry, my brain. Uh, But she had complications of Lyme disease and she passed away and that's just terrible. She's beloved. Uh, Anyway, again, proof that there's no God because Donald Trump is breathing today and this lovely woman is is not. So that's just ridiculous. So uh, how is this saga going to unfold? I don't even know. You know, I didn't have Trump hiding nuclear secrets in the basement of Mar-a-Lago with a padlock from Big Fast Sporting Goods on my bingo card for things that could happen in this last week. Uh, but here they are. Here it is. It did. It happened. And, and there you go. So what are we going to do about that? I don't, we'll see. We'll see how it all just plays out. But, you know, I'm no longer afraid of them screaming civil war and scream. I'm not, people scream at me. I'm screaming back now. This morning, some guy screamed at me. I screamed right back at him. I was vulgar, too. He's old. This old family's walking. They got these two Great Danes. I said, oh, gentle giants. And they're like, oh, that one's not real gentle. And I go, oh, so me and Ember start, we walk off the sidewalk. Okay, we're off the sidewalk now. We're about five, six, seven, eight feet away on this side. Oh, you're still too close. And I said, well, I'm not going to walk 20 feet away if your dog is that vicious. And then this Great Dane starts jumping towards us. I said, you need to maintain that dog or don't walk it. And he said, oh, screw you. And that's when I got vulgar. You all know me. You don't want to hear what I said. Because I said, with your little shriveled, you know, you get the point. And then he had the nerve to speak back. And so I just went on, honey. Got even worse. And this woman goes, I don't like that kind of talk. I said, well, he's the one that said to screw me. I was just making clear how long and with what. And he goes, I'm getting sick and tired of people like you. And I said, well, good. You'll be dead soon. (laughs) And people that know me at the park came up afterwards and said, we don't ever really hear you do that. What was, what was happening? And I told them, they were laughing. I said, you bring some dog to the park that you can't handle. A great day. And, you know, these are old people. They could just be dragged. And it's a dog that shouldn't be in public. And I call you on it. And you say to screw me? Oh, honey, then you getting told. Okay? You getting told. All righty. So we got that happening with Trump. We don't know what's going to happen with Trump, really. What's going to happen with Trump? I don't know what's going to happen with Trump, but we got it happening. Uh, It's a Friday. We should be thinking of entertainment options other than... (laughs) And don't you just want to live in a world where his name is never... Well, I want Trump to become Voldemort. I really want he who must not be named. Okay, I just... Don't... Aren't you ready to live in a world without talking about that man for at least a day Joe Biden has had a, Joe Biden, oh, I'm I'm on the Brady Bunch, time to change. Uh, Joe Biden has had a a wonderful couple months. Gas prices down every day for 50 days, down below $4 a gallon again in many places. He signed this big, you know, this big bill is going through. He's going to sign it. It's a big, Al Gore says it's the biggest turning point for the climate and all this, you know. He's had a great week. He really has. He's had a great couple months, really. Just all these accomplishments that Joe Biden has done, and it's incredible. He's just getting it through, even with a a divided House and Senate. He's getting it done. We should all be talking about all the benefits that are going to come to us from these various packages of legislation that we're paying for. But instead, what are we talking about? Donald Trump. 
What are we talking about tomorrow? Donald Trump. What are we talking about next week? Donald Trump. MAGA. In September, the January 6th hearings start back up. I am sick to death of Donald Trump. Oh, God. You know, I would say if he would just stroke out, but then, of course, the MAGA would say we killed him. You know, it would, when it's really McDonald's that killed him. Uh, when Donald Trump dies, someone should sue McDonald's on, for wrongful death. <laughs> it wasn't so wrong, was it? Uh, anyway, I'm just, I'm tired of hearing about him. I'm tired of having to talk about him. It's been like five, six years now. Uh, if you do talk radio, you got to talk about this schlub. Why? I'm more worried about where I'm going to eat for lunch today. It is Friday. I get to eat out. Woo! 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 Although I've eaten out a few times this week. But it's Friday, and I, this is my official eat out day. I think I'm going to go for Greek up at my quarries, I think. Uh, but maybe not. I don't know. There's so many places I need to support. And now that I only go out like once a week, maybe twice, you know, you have to pick. Like when I was going to four restaurants a week, I could support a bunch. But now I have to pick. Got to pick which one's going to get my money. I noticed a few prices going down. Not many. A few. Like on Grubhub, I, I haven't logged on there for a while. Have y'all logged on there? Don't. Uh, they're still hugely expensive. And Instacart, I wanted to use it yesterday. I did. I paid for it. I wanted to use it. But my order from Sprouts was going to be $100. $100. Then their delivery, not delivery fee. My delivery is free because I pay their $100 a year. But their service fee, because they charge you a delivery free fee and then a service fee. Why? Because they can. Uh, so that was $6 and the tip was $10. I wasn't going to spend $16 to have my groceries delivered. I just, I'm, I'm not. And I know that's cheap. I mean, someone is shopping for them and stuff, but they should be being paid by Instacart, not me. But they ain't. So they're working for tips. So I just said, no, I'll go to the store tomorrow. So today I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to mask up. Uh, you can't get monkeypox in the store, thank goodness, unless you're screwing the butcher, and I'm not. Um, <laughs> but the man that works in produce, not toss his salad. No, I'm just kidding, kidding. Uh, well, over at Vaughn's, I'm not kidding. There's a hot guy that works in produce at Vaughn's. He's, ooh. Whew, child. Uh, oh, last night, okay, I have to leave you with this story. I do, because I, I tell you all everything. What is the closest encounter you've ever had with a huge force of nature? Like, have you all ever seen a tornado in person? I have. Have you all ever seen a tsunami? I actually have. Uh, have you all ever seen a water spout? That's a tornado at sea. I have. Have you all ever been in a hurricane? I have. Uh, what is, what is the closest you've been to something really scary that could kill you? Because last night here in Las Vegas, a lightning and thunderstorm with rain rolled through in this monsoon season and lightning struck, struck 180 feet from my house. Okay. And I'll tell you how this happened. It was really something. It was really something. I'll ne I will never forget this. I'll never forget it. You know? So I'm on the phone with Steve on speaker. So the phone is not touching me. No Bluetooth headsets, nothing. So I'm on the phone with Steve on speaker. And he's saying there's a ton of lightning and the strip has already gone dark. And the strip did. The Las Vegas strip went dark last night due to lightning. The Orleans sign uh, started on fire due to lightning. Uh, a lot. The planet Hollywood got flooded. Uh, rain came in the top. A lot of stuff going on in Vegas last night. So... The lightning is happening in the center of the valley, which it doesn't normally. It normally happens around the valley, in the mountains, or up against them. But it was in the center of the valley last night. And I'm in the center of the valley. So Steve's like, oh yeah, it's everywhere. But I can't really see it. But I'm hearing it. And the thunder is, it's loud. So what I'm about to explain to you happened all at the same time. Okay, so this wasn't like this happened, then this happened, then this happened. It all happened at the same time. So I'm on the patio upstairs. I'm looking downstairs, you know, out into the world. Uh, and suddenly it's as if someone turned on a switch to the sun, but brighter. Like the brightest light, the brightest Hollywood light you can just ever, like looking in, you know those spotlights out front of, uh, you know, when there's a big premiere or something? Imagine looking into one of those, that bright. So suddenly it went that bright, and then a bolt of horizontal lightning, lightning going this way, like more like 45 degree angle, shoots across my driveway about 40 feet in front of my face. Literally, about 40 feet. 
So I see this streak with the, the concrete, a trail of, of like singeing on the concrete, the water drying as it goes. And right at that moment of this bright light and this thing, the loudest crash of thunder I have ever heard, and it was reported on Twitter that many people heard it here in Vegas, and they're like, it's the loudest I've ever heard. So loud, it knocked pictures off the wall and broke a window here in the complex. Boom. So I'm on the patio, the rain is pouring. All of a sudden, I see a horizontal streak of lightning. And then to the left, this enormous light and boom, louder than any boom I've ever heard. Then immediately, my phone does an emergency warning that says, lightning imminent, get inside. And I rush inside the house. Ember's now terrified. She wasn't up until that point. She is terrified now. And I said, Steve, and he goes, I'm looking at a map. Lightning just struck your place. And I'm like, not my place, not my house. But yes, something right here got struck by lightning. And sure enough, right outside the gate, right here, not more than 150 feet away, there was a lightning strike. Uh, and it's mind-boggling that I was that close. And that one of the offshoots of the bolt, because the bolt, they have the offshoots, one of those offshoots came right down my driveway. Uh, and I saw it just right in front of my face. That's the closest to lightning I ever want to be in my life. And if I never hear another thunder crack like that thunder crack, it did, it, does not, it did not sound like any thunder I've heard. It sounded more like you were in a giant electrical, uh, like you were in one of those Tesla uh, electrical things and someone turned the switch on and it was really, it sounded like electricity. It was mind boggling people. It was, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget last night. I'll never forget that going in front of my face and then all of a sudden over to the side, this enormous, I mean, if there is an end of the world apocalypse and God comes, that's what it's going to look like because it was just like, <gasps> and then the sound, I can't even tell you how loud it was. It was something. Uh, so that's, that's today. We're next week. This is all going to people. This is all going to play out over months now. You all want immediate, like Trump arrested, Trump indicted. You want these people that it's not, it's going to take months, months. Today, they said they could proceed with a criminal case of fraud against his businesses in New York. The, that trial is not even scheduled till fall. So justice often moves slowly unless it's against you or me. <laughs> and then of course, if you're poor, it moves swiftly. But if you're rich, you can delay it almost inevitably. I mean, Lindsey Graham didn't show up for this subpoena in Georgia. And if that were you or I, they'd show up at our door and bring us there. Uh, they're not doing that to him. So, you know, he will be made to go or his testimony will be compelled. But, you know. Uh, all right, the book. I want, I'm finishing up this project for Heath, uh, which has gotten way out of hand. Meaning, uh, I was just told by my editor that he wants me to find all the B-roll. And that's about 200 200 to 300 five second clips. Uh, that's a lot. And then he wants me to script every single cut, every single word, like cut to this person saying that. Normally he does that, but I, I, but you know, we film life in segments. He takes all the film. He gives me a half hour episode. This time he wants me to not just tell him where I want the stuff, but he actually wants me to basically you know, edit it without editing it. So that's a lot. But as soon as that's over, uh, which will be this week, next week, um, we're going back to the book. We're trying to have the book out for Christmas, but I don't know. It's going to be up to, if a publisher says yes to the book, it's going to be on their time frame. If I self-publish some copies, then we may be able to have copies by Christmas through Book Baby. Uh, but uh, if it's published, then it'll be up to the publisher. So I'll know in the next like month what's happening with that. All right, I am Corel. You be who you want to be. Slam doesn't hurt anybody. I uh, will see you back here on Monday. Uh, and, uh, you know, hey, they're all screaming this could happen to you too. So just be sure you don't steal any nuclear secrets from the United States and hide them in your basement with a padlock from Big Five Sporting Goods. Don't do that, okay? Uh, otherwise, it could happen to you. So if, if you plan on that, then use that as an example. If I steal classified documents, uh, particularly those around nuclear secrets, 
uh, and keep them in the basement of a hotel uh, with a padlock that you could get at Big Five Sporting Goods, then yes, the FBI may in fact pay you a visit. But if you don't do that, then chances are they won't. Okay? Don't forget to follow me on Twitter only. I am no longer posting to Instagram or to Facebook because Mark Zuckerberg giving up those, those messages of, and that girl being prosecuted for abortion. Can't take it. I'm over it. You should be too. There's still Twitter for now, and that's really Carell, R-E-A-L-O-Y-K-A-R-E-L. And if you're a Patreon subscriber, mwah, kisses. Let's do a Zoom call. We're going to do a Zoom call. I'm going to send you all a note. We're going to do a Zoom call because I love you so much. And that's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash really Carell. See you all on Monday. It looks like it's struck by lot. I should, I should go gamble, right? Wait, let me back up. They say your chances of winning in Vegas are, you're, are you know, what do they say? You'd easier to be struck by lightning? Honey, <laughs> I need to go gamble. <laughs> Make your device a whole lot smarter. Get the Corel Cast app free at the App Store of your choice now.